So after I made the first video about how to learn SQL using Excel concepts uh, for filters specific, um, now we're going to get into a second part, which is going to be aggregations and pivot table. How does that translate into SQL? So let's look at the data set we have here with an orders table. Um, so the order ID is a primary key here where each row is unique and that tells you, you know, this is a specific, uh, unique order that happened. And so when we, when you want to know exactly how many orders happen on a specific date, what you will do is that you will, you will actually filter your order dates to a specific date and then do your count A column, right? To get a number of orders that happened in one day. So how does that translate to SQL? So uh, for uh, select is when, you know, select uh, is a statement for you to pick the column. And then so here we're going to count the order ID exactly how you would do it in your count of A column which is your a, uh, order ID, and then the as order count here. So as is um, renaming your column into something else that's more meaningful, which helps someone who is just simply looking at your outcome to be able to know, oh, okay, this is exactly uh, order count, and I don't need to know what the underlying table is. And then from your orders table, so from, you always want to from your, a specific table that you have and then filter down to a date where you have where, you know, order date to a specific date. So then I would know this, so what this query gives you is I would know the order count. The next one I'm going to talk about is count distinct, which is equivalent to your count A function in Excel, where you know that there's duplicates in your data and you want to count that you know the unique id like here for example would be a customer id and it's because it's a foreign key so it's not unique uh, and it's duplicated so you will want to use a count a uh, function in excel and how would that translate to sql would be you know select uh, count parentheses distinct so you want to you know first take out and like, make your customer id distinct first and then count it uh, and then as rename it to a customer account, an active customer account, so that you get, uh, you know, just the active customer account that, who made an order on that specific date. Uh, so, and then you do from orders table and with a f where filter to filter down to a specific. And next we're going to talk about the sum function that people use a lot in Excel where you will um, look at the orders table and then you wonder, you want to know, you know, what's the total quantity sold uh, today or in a range of date. So then you will do equals sum of your D column, which is your quantity um, column. And how does that translate into SQL? So essentially you're using the same function sum and you do so you select the summation of quantity and then rename it as total quantity for example from this order details table and then what you can do even more is that if you want to know the quantity of a specific product id all you need to do is add a where clause and then put a product id and equals uh, 42 for example that'll give you this will give you the total quantity that was sold for uh, product 22. And then the same thing, if you want to know, like, you know, what's the minimum uh, number of quantities that people make uh, for their order for a specific product, then you will do, you know, minimum of your quantity column. And how that translates is you, you will get, you know, use the same function minimum. So you would put select minimum quantity as making some sort of meaningful name, which is kind of long in my case. And then, or you can also, you know, use the maximum function, same thing, uh, should be pretty straightforward. And then you can also, you know, calculate what's it. So you often will want to calculate like, what's the average of, you know, the quantity sold per, uh, each order, uh, or for each product. And when you do that, uh, in Excel, you can absolutely translate into SQL with the same idea of like select um, your average quantity from your order details table that's exactly how you would write it in your excel function it's just that you're 
changing average to AVG. And I'm sure that many people, when they use Excel, they also use the if function and they check if that cell is equal to a specific big value, for example, 51 here. And then if it's true, then you want to put it as egg else. Uh, if something else and they put other and you can also have nested if uh, statements in your excel function which is also can be done in sql using a case statement function so you know how would that translate into sql so what you would do is pretty much the same logic that when you write if uh, cell equals a value in this case you'll do select uh, case one is you know checking your logic if uh so instead of checking a cell like c2 you'll check the whole column which is product id equals uh this value 51 then uh i put it as shirt whatever it's like just different names uh then put it as this value can be a string or else uh, can be another string like other or a blank, which is null, and then end the statement as product name. So uh, it will give you every single row as how you, it will be done in Excel. Uh, it will just give, tell you, you know, for each product ID, what the name is based on this logic that you have and from your order details table. And that will give you the same output as column F. Or you can, you know, for your nested if statement, even more advanced is that you can check multiple conditions. They can have not just product ID equals 51, but also product ID equals 11. And it'll give, uh, you'll name it differently. So your case when product ID is 51, then you name it as shirt. And when the product ID is 11, then you'll name it as shorts. Uh, you will try to, you can name as many as possible with a when, uh, when as many as you want. And then at the end, just have else, uh, that's like any everything else, uh, you'll name it as other or null, which is blank, and then end as product name for your order. Now I'm going to cover a pivot table. I'm sure many people use pivot table like all the time. And how would this translate into SQL language is that, let's say, you know, you pick product ID as your rows and then you have sum of quantity as your values and that's how it will look here. And how would that translate into SQL would be that you will select uh, your product ID and a summation of quantity by the product ID from your order details table and then group by one, uh, which you also can group by product ID. Uh, but one just tells you that you're grouping by the position of your uh, in your select uh, statement. So that in this case, one, the first one would be product ID. So in SQL, after you have group by, you know, take the aggregation and group by something, it's also very common to have a having clause. So having clause is essentially, so after you already group by, you know, you, after you have ag aggregated by your product ID and your summation of quantity, you only want to uh, filter down to the ones that has, let's say, uh, sum of quantity greater than 10. And how is this different from your where clause? So where clause is before you have aggregated to anything, like before you even use pivot table, it's, it's filtering on the row basis before aggregation. And you have to use having if the data is already aggregated. And how you will do that will be, you know, you group by one, which is your product ID and then that gives your summation sum of quantity and having sum of quantity greater than or equal to 10, which is uh, are the, uh, col the rows I highlighted here, like the product ID 11 has a quantity of 12, so we're going to keep that. And then uh, product ID 14 only has quantity of 9, so we're not going to have that. So at the end, you're going to have only the rows that has uh, greater than 10, greater than or equal to 10 which are the ones that I highlighted here. So this way you will eliminate the one, the product IDs that doesn't have more than 10. The other thing that uh, people use Excel often use is after you create your pivot table, you want to sort by the largest to the smallest or smallest to the largest so that it will tell you, you know, which product has the most quantity sold. And you will do that in um, SQL by same thing, select product ID, summation of quantity from your order details table, and then group by one. That's all the same. That's how you get to your pivot table. The last thing you want to add to sort it will be order by 
your, uh, oh, I put order by two here, but two is based on position as well. So per ID is one, uh, position one, and sum of quantity is position two. And you can order by two or put sum of quantity in descending order, which is from the largest to the smallest, or ascending order, ASC, will be the from the smallest to the largest. So make sure that you know, you know, you want descending or ascending, which is the same idea as your sort function. So to quickly cover what I have covered in this, uh, this video about, you know, what Excel functions to translate to SQL, first thing we did was a lot of uh, aggregation functions such as count and count distinct. Uh, you have to know which one to use based on if they're duplicated uh, values or not, and you need to check that yourself. And then also summation, min, max, and average. Those are pretty useful functions that people tend to use a lot. And then we also talked about a case statement, which is essentially the same as if function in your Excel formula. And you're, you can have a nested if function, which is essentially the same as case statement with multiple when logic clauses. And then the third thing we cover is group by. So group by is essentially the same thing as when you build your pivot tables, your, you know, aggregating based on a specific column and then you also have having which is pretty much filtering after you already aggregated to uh, your pivot table and then you're filtering out uh, the lower values or higher values and then the last thing i covered is you know your sort state uh, the sort function in your excel button uh, you can do order by, which is the same thing as order by, and you can do ascending order or descending order. You'll type A.